name is Abel Darbo, Curator of Water and Contemporary Drawings at the Morgan. And um, it's a pleasure to welcome you to tonight's lecture, which is organized in conjunction with the exhibition of Joseph Albers' works on paper, which is currently on view in our galleries upstairs. Um, if you have not seen the exhibition, I would encourage you to do so. It's, it will be on view until October 14, and you can even see it uh, tonight after the lecture, if you want, since the galleries are open until 9 on Friday. Uh, our speaker tonight is Nicholas Fox Weber, and I cannot think of anyone more knowledgeable about Albers and more competent to talk about him. Not only was he a close friend of Albers and his wife Annie, but for the last 36 years, he has been the director of the Joseph and Annie Albers Foundation. Nick Weber has curated many exhibitions of Albers' works. The most recent one is Joseph Albers, the Sacred Modernist, Joseph Albers as a Catholic artist, which was at the Lewis Glucksman Gallery, University College Cork in Ireland earlier this year. In 2004, he was the curator of Joseph and Annie Albers Designs for Living at the Cooper Hewitt National Design Museum in New York. I will not even begin to list the numerous books, essays, and articles Nick Weber has written about Albers. Rather, to give you an idea of the range of his expertise and interest, I would like to mention a few of the books he has written on other topics. They include the Bauhaus Group, Le Corbusier, The Clarks of Cooperstown, Baltus, a biography, and The Art of Badar. In 1994, he received the L.L. Winship Book Award given by the Boston Globe for his book, Patron Saints, Five Rebels, Rebels Who Opened America to a New Art. Currently, he's at work on a biography of Pete Mondrian. As you will see tonight, Nick Weber is also a fascinating and often entertaining speaker who has lectured extensively on many aspects of modern <coughs> art and culture. Tonight, the subject of his talk is Joseph Albers at Home and at Work. Please welcome Nicholas Fox Weber. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, and thank you for doing such an extraordinary job with this exhibition. The show that's here at the Morgan has had venues in Paris, Copenhagen, Lisbon, Munich, and other locations, and this is its finale, and it's a very, very grand finale. It's um, hung with such sensitivity, such an eye. I know that Joseph would have been very pleased. He was 62 years old when he began to do a series of paintings of squares within squares. He called them homages to the square. They might equally have been called homages to color. He chose the simplest possible format, a square, completely regular in its proportions and angles, and he put squares within squares to allow you to see color. Now what the exhibition here shows you is Albers at work, how he came to this beautiful conclusion. Now, I want to tell you a little bit more about the squares. They are in four formats. He did, people always ask how many he did. We don't know. He began in 1950 when he was 62 years old. He was still doing them when he died 26 years later. We're in the process of creating a catalog resume, and we have discovered over 2,000 paintings of squares. All of them have certain things in common. If you think of them, follow the arrow here, as being 10 units across, one, two, three, then four in the middle, that brings it up to seven, eight, nine, and 10. You have half measures underneath and one and a half measures above. That's true of all of the squares. And the reason for this arrangement, which of course is not concentric, but weighted toward the bottom, is to create a tension. The work is two-dimensional and three-dimensional. We read it as flat, 
abstract, non-representational, and then it can become a picture, it can become a window, spatial thing, 